The Modli JMA was designed in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, built by the independent state of Croatia, and after World War II, operated by the Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia. It was an inexpensive training aircraft that would be used in this role up to 1950. The story of the Modli JM-8 began in 1938 when an aircraft engineer from the 1st Air Force Regiment stationed at Novi Sad, Josip Modli, finished work on a new light training aircraft design. He originally intended to design and build a single-seat trainer that was simple and cheap to manufacture by using mostly wood. He also intended to gain the interest of amateur aviators in aero clubs with a low price. The JM-8 designation comes from the initials of the designer's name. Due to its small size and low price, it earned the nickname Komorats, Mosquito. Hello, and welcome to another Plane Encyclopedia voice article. I'm your host, Butane, and today I will be covering the Modley training aircraft. The following year, Modley actually began building this aircraft. He reused the small 18 horsepower engine taken from a damaged French HM14 Pudisil Nebeskavash in Serbian. Four had been bought from France in 1935, but due to construction problems, their use was limited and all were damaged during test flights. One was tested at Novi Sad, where the 1st Air Force Regiment was stationed. At that time, word of his design and work reached the Yugoslavian Air Force headquarters. Headquarters then instructed, or ordered depending on the source, aircraft engineer Tishma, who was owner of the Albatross, aircraft manufacturer from the city of Sremska Mitrovica, to contact Modli. After short negotiations, Tishma and Modli reached an agreement that Albatross should finish the construction of the JM-8. If the design received any mass production orders, Modley agreed to provide Albatross with a license for its production. The JM-8 was completed in early 1941, with testing scheduled to begin in March. Due to bad weather, Albatross's main airport at Ruma was flooded during March and early April, so no test flights were conducted. During the outbreak of the April War, also known as the Axis Invasion of Yugoslavia, all finished and partially constructed planes from Albatross were loaded on a plane on the 10th of April. Because of the great confusion due to the outbreak of war and the lack of documentation, the fate of this train and its cargo is unknown to this day. After the end of the April War, the Serbian Air Force Commission made estimates of all unpaid pre-war designs, including the Modli JM-8, in order to arrange for future payments for military contracts. The commission, after analysis of the Modli JM-8 documentation, concluded that the aircraft did not meet any military requirements and was suitable for civilian use only. Technical Characteristics the Modley JM-8 was designed as a single-engined, high-wing, mixed-construction, but mostly wood, training aircraft. Its fuselage had a simple design made of plywood. The high wings and the rear tail were made of a wooden structure covered with fabric. For better flight controls, Modley used two modified Göttingen 426 Longerins. The wings were connected to the fuselage with three N-shaped metal bars on both sides and two additional ones in the center. The tail had a large rudder and elevators made of wood. It was powered by the two-cylinder Abier and Dune 18 horsepower engine. The engine compartment was covered with duralumin. The two-bladed propeller was made of walnut. A fuel tank with a capacity of 16 liters was placed in the center of the wing. The landing gear was fixed, but was equipped with rubber shock absorbers for greater comfort and control during landing. There was no rear wheel, being instead equipped with a small skid and shock absorber. The pilot's cockpit was fully open with a small windshield at the front. The cockpit had a simple design and was equipped with basic controls and instrumentation. These flight instruments included an airspeed indicator, fuel level, tachometer, and altimeter. As the first prototype was never adequately tested, details about its flying performance are not known. During World War II After the Yugoslavian capitulation, its territories were divided between the Axis forces. 
the Germans created the independent state of Croatia puppet state, Nezavisna Derzava Hrvatska. Despite promises of sending military equipment, weapons, and aircraft, the NDH was mostly supplied with older or captured equipment. The NDH aviation industry was heavily dependent on supplies from Germany and Italy, as it lacked any major production capacity or industrial development, meaning domestic production was not possible. The only attempt at domestic production was with the Modli aircraft. In 1941, Modli joined the new NDH Air Force with the rank of flight captain as a flight school instructor. He immediately began working on his second prototype, now simply called Modli 8. Unlike its first prototype, the second was powered by a stronger four-cylinder Praga B, giving 40 horsepower. As this engine was too strong for the prototype, its power was reduced to just 20 horsepower. For the landing gear, two smaller rear wheels from a German Messerschmitt 109 were reused. The Modli 8 was also shorter in comparison to the first prototype by 0.94 feet or 15 centimeter. In 1943, Modli was transferred to the technical workshop of the first airbase in Zagreb, where he continued to develop his plane. In 1944, the Modli 8 was completed and introduced to NDH operational service according to authors T. Lisko and D. Chanak. Unfortunately, they do not give more information on its service history. According to authors B. Nadoveza and N. Jokic, on the other hand, they noted that Modli deliberately delayed the production of the Modli 8 and it was never fully completed for use by the NDH. On 26th of October 1944, Modli fled to Slovenia at the helm of a Bukur BU-131 Jungmann in hopes of joining the Yugoslav Communist Partisans. Meanwhile, his assistants and friends in Zagreb hid the Modli 8 prototype in the attic of an old shed. Due to the chaos and confusion caused by the war, it was easy to hide the small and lightweight prototype. The Modli 8 would survive the war intact. In NDH service, the Modli 8's lower fuselage, wings, and tail were painted in silver. The upper part of the fuselage and vertical stabilizer was blue. The wing struts were painted in red, while the middle of the fuselage wore a red stripe on both sides with a white outline. There were NDH markings with a large JM-8 painted on the tail. The color scheme will remain the same after the war, but the NDH marking will be replaced by the communist star. After the war After the collapse of the NDH and the German forces in Yugoslavia, Modli, now captain in the Yugoslav People's Army, moved his prototype from Zagreb to Skopje, where it was completed in an army workshop. Modli himself flew the prototype during the summer of 1945. Surprisingly, he did not report this flight to his superiors and an alarm was raised, with several fighters launched to intercept him. Modli was lucky, as this incident did not affect his military career. The Modli 8 was, by order of the Air Force Command, moved to Belgrade for further tests. The aircraft proved to be a good design as it was easy and pleasant to fly according to test pilot Vasilye Vracevich. There were some issues with the sensitivity of the large rudders and elevators during flight. For takeoff, it only needed a very short 170 meter or 558 feet runway and could land on a 125 meter or 410 feet airfield. The maximum speed was around 100 kilometers per hour. 223 miles per hour, at an altitude of 1 km. The Modli 8 was then given to Aircraft Center Verschatz, where it remained for training and propaganda flights. It was used operationally up to 1950, when it was removed from Army service. During its operational service, the Modli 8 was also used as a glider trainer. Under the right conditions, it could be used as a glider with the engine shut off, which was useful for glider training. Josip Modli later, date unknown, designed a two-seater version named Modli 9, but it was never fully completed. Both the Modli 8 and the unfinished 9 were given to the Croatian Technical Museum in Zagreb after the death of Josip Modli in 1974. Conclusion Despite being cheap, easy to build, and pleasant to fly, 
the Modli 8 was never adopted for military or civilian service. The first prototype was never fully tested due to the outbreak of the war and was lost, precise fate unknown. The second prototype was built during the war and was in use up to 1950. Despite the good feedback for its flight performance from the military, the Modli 8 was rejected for production, mostly due to the recent adoption of the BC-3 Troika. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe. You can find some more information relating to this article in the full article which is linked in the description. Until next time, keep us in your sights.